In yesterday's episode, we successfully infiltrated the pit. Our task is to help the slaves secure their freedom and find a cure for the horrible mutations afflicting them. As we enter, we find our raider interrogating three slaves. Your friends are dead. You're next if you don't talk. You helped them escape. I know it. We can do this the easy way. Or the I'd break you in fucking halfway. Your choice. Fine. Have it your way. Fucking talk, you piece of shit! Oh. The raider opens fire on the slaves. If we managed to sneak a weapon into the pit, we can take it out and try to defend these guys. But no matter how quick we are, these three slaves die. This is a scripted event. If we do open fire, all other raiders in this area shoot back. This is not how one does a successful infiltration. So reloading a previous save, we watch helplessly as this raider executes these three slaves. Oh. Examining the bodies, we see that these slaves are horribly disfigured, possibly due to maltreatment, but also due to the strange disease afflicting them. Werner told us that it had something to do with the unique concoction of toxins produced by the metalworking and industry going on here. We see a big hole in the middle of this square, filled with old cars and lots of scrap metal. Above the hole, we find Nola. When the time comes, I'll be here to fix you up. Oh, honey, you're pretty banged up there. I can help you out. What do you say? I'm all right for now. You say so. Just be careful out there. We need everyone healthy. She's a doctor we can use if we ever get injured. And going down into the hole, we find enslaved men and women with really interesting devices, grinders of some sort, chopping up a bunch of scrap metal. Girders, cars, barrels. They break it down and then shovel it into the furnace. We even see a car propped up by sticks. But we need to find Medea. Heading out of the hole and going down an alley, we find Medea waiting for us. Werner sent you, didn't he? Good. He finally found someone. We can't talk out in the open like this. Meet me in my house as soon as you can. We'll talk there. She turns around and continues down the alley. We see a series of catwalks built atop of this alley with scaffolding. As we move into the town square, we hear a conversation above us. Anthony's sick. He sent me to take his place. Tough shit. Down near where you belong. No! These catwalks are what's called Uptown, and slaves are not allowed in Uptown. Somehow this slave got up there, trying to do the work that a sick slave couldn't do, but he was killed for it. On the eastern side of the square, we find stocks used to punish and publicly humiliate the slaves. In one we find a skeleton, and in the other we see a still-living slave. Why are you walking around? Don't you have an assignment? The raiders seem perfectly content to kill a slave outright for even a minor infraction, and at other times they choose to publicly punish them on the stocks, whereby it looks like they sometimes forget about the slaves, leaving them to die of starvation or disease. The raiders guard their slaves. We find guards around every corner. In the bottom of this ruined building, we find Kai. She manages the food for the slaves. I think it finally stopped moving. Yeah, what do you want? What are you doing? Shouldn't you be working? I am working. You must be new here. I serve the slop to the other slaves. You want food? Let me know. The good news is that this crap is nearly unlimited. But it's mostly radiated water and trog meat anyway. You want some or not? Oh yeah, sounds great. Give me some. It's your funeral. Here you go. This slop is horrifying because we just learned that it was made from trog meat, but we learned from Werner earlier that trogs are horribly irradiated humans. People who spend too much time absorbing the unique toxic chemicals released by the pit will eventually mutate first into wild men where they simply go insane and ultimately into trogs. We haven't met a trog yet, but they must look and act considerably different from human if these raiders and slaves eat them. The slop grants 25 HP and gives you 15 rads, but I don't think I'll ever be hungry enough to want to try it. 
Heading down the alleyway close to where we saw that slave drop from the scaffolding, we find a dead end. It goes all the way around a building and ends at a huge barbed wire fence. So turning around and heading back, we round a corner to see a locked gate. This leads to Uptown, the scaffolding controlled by the raiders. We can't explore this yet, but gaining access may be the key to finding Asher and the cure. This leaves us with only one way to go. To the north, we find a door leading to Medea's quarters. All right, we can talk now, but we shouldn't take too long. They saw you come in here, so they'll come looking for you if you take too long. I have a plan for getting you into Asher's palace, but we need to wait. In the meantime, you're going to have to blend in. This place is a nightmare. Yes, it is. Can you tell me what's going on here? I don't know what you saw on the way in, but the guards don't really take kindly to workers just standing around. You're going to need to look busy or they'll sniff you out pretty quickly. And if they get too close, you don't look like you belong here. The reward better be worth all this. Well, if you mess it up and get killed, you won't get any reward now, will you? I didn't come here to work as a slave. I came here to save you all. Yeah, and right now this is what you need to do to help us. You're not really going to be much use if the guards figure out who you are and stake you out for the trogs, are you? Well, I see your point. I'm not happy about it, but since I'm stuck here, whatever. I assure you no one is more unhappy about being here than us. But right now, we need you to do a job we call collecting the trash. Outside the mill, there are a bunch of steel ingots just laying around. Every so often, the foreman puts out a work order to collect them. It's pretty much a death sentence, but they never assign it to anyone. They make us pick who's going to do it. Bastards. Let me guess, the area is filled with super mutants. What in God's name is a super mutant? You know what, never mind. Whatever they are, you're wrong. Uh, okay, then well, what's the catch? Well, the area is full of trogs. Trog? What, is that some sort of fish? You're either an idiot or a smartass. Either way, I don't think it's funny. They're what most of us hope we never become, but the contamination gets to everyone. For most people, it's some form of cancer. Sometimes harmless, sometimes not. For others, the contamination drives them insane. If it doesn't kill them, it changes them. They become animals, deformed and inhuman. It's not pretty. They're everywhere and they kill on sight. So I'm just supposed to strangle these trogs with my bare hands if I meet one? I can't really help you there. Ask around. Maybe check with Marco in the mill. He's been making some of our tools into weapons. You might even be able to find a gun on one of the dead bosses out in the steel yard. They... What was that? What's going on in here, Medea? Who is this scam? Um, nothing. Uh, nothing, sir. I, I was just telling this new worker about the job the foreman posted. Oh, yeah? So she's the one that's going out to the steel yard, huh? Yes, sir. I, I told her what she needs to do. She knows. Ten ingots as fast as she can. Well, then. I hope you also said goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> All right, playtime's over. Get to work, grinders. Disgusting, isn't it? With Jackson gone, we can talk with Medea again to learn more. You're supposed to be blending in. Why are you here? Tell me about this cure. The cure is the key to healing the sickness around here. Look at us. We've all got it. And the more they force us to work in this mess, the worse it gets. People are going trog faster than ever before. The cure is the first thing in this place that hasn't been infected. Tell me about yourself, Medea. What about me? I was born here, I'll probably die here. I've lived my whole life under Asher's boot heel. The only thing that keeps me alive is the thought that I might be able to turn the tables someday. What can you tell me about the pit? I was born shortly after the Brotherhood Scourge. As bad as it is now, I can't imagine what it was like before Asher. Some of the stories I heard when I was a little girl... About the trogs and the wild men that scare the hell out of you. I don't care how tough you were. Honestly, I don't know how anything survived, let alone how Asher managed to control any of those freaks. Sometimes, just sometimes, I think that maybe things are better with him here. Tell me more about your people. We come from all over. Most were born here, but lately, the bosses have been bringing us in from all over. All right, I'll be going. Come on, head out to the steel mill and look busy. 
Medea goes and sits down to eat some slop. We can loot some food and small resources in her room, but we need to head on over to the mill. Leaving her place, we go to the square where we find a pink-haired woman walking around. Have you seen Wild Bill around? Who's Wild Bill? Bill's a friend of mine, a very dear friend. We've worked the mill together for a long time. Last week, we were forced to choose someone to gather ingots from the steel yard. Bill volunteered. He didn't want anyone to have to die out there, but he's a survivor. He can't be dead. You look like you can handle yourself. Could you look for him and bring him back? All right, Millie. I'll help out. Thank you so much. Just be careful out there. Bill would never forgive himself if someone got hurt looking for him. Good luck. So while we're in the steel yard, we need to keep our eyes out for Wild Bill. Looks like another slave has somehow found his way up onto the scaffolding above, and he's being beaten mercilessly for it. Retracing our steps, we head back towards the furnace where the slaves are breaking down metal. Continuing along and rounding a corner, we find a slave named Aiden breaking down a bus for scrap. You seem so anxious. Hey there. Welcome to the family. Family? You're all slaves. You're not family. We are what we wish to be. I found this book once, over by the library. Medea read part of it to me. It said, A good traveler has no fixed plan and is not intent on arriving. Why are you so cheery? I'm not cheery, really. I've just accepted my role here. I found a book once. Medea read part of it to me. It said, the master doesn't try to be powerful. He is powerful. An ordinary man keeps reaching for power, and thus never has enough. So you're happy to be where you are? I'd like to be free, but I'm not. And the harder I cling to that desire, the more miserable I'll be that I'm stuck here. And this work is hard enough without extra misery. Speaking of which, I should get back to it. Calming philosophy aside, being beaten kind of hurts. Both of those quotes come from the same book, a Chinese philosophical text called Tao Te Ching. It's one of the fundamental texts behind Taoism. Next to Aiden, we find the mill, which is a big brick building. Inside, we find the heart of the pit's industry. Slaves work giant machines that press down molten metal, shaping it into sheets which are likely cut into strips which are then turned into ingots. We find slaves repairing the machinery, slaves manning the controls, and slaves taking inventory of scrap. The slaves are breaking down a lot of the scrap even in here. We see big shelving units filled with building ventilation shafts and huge red engines. Perhaps before the war, this factory built these engines before it was taken over by these raiders. We see big pots transporting molten metal from tracks along the ceiling. In the middle of this floor is a big caged dome covering a hole that goes deep into the ground. We do see broken pipes and some sort of structure down there. We'll have to explore it later. Turning east, we see a platform with a slave on top fiddling with some controls. His name is Brand, and we can walk up some steps to talk with him. You're new, aren't you? Are you here from the Erie Stretch? The Capital Wasteland? Ronto? Where's home? Wow, sounds like these slavers get their slaves from a whole lot of places. This brand guy is awfully inquisitive. If we pass a speech check, we can learn why by asking, why do you want to know? Well, since you might be able to help me, I'll let you in on a little secret. The slaves are always planning all sorts of things. I find out what's going on and let the bosses know, and they let me shrug off some of the work detail. Good deal, huh? If you hear anything, you should let me know. Ah, uh, so this guy's a filthy rat. We can tell him everything we know. We can say, I'm from outside the pit, and I'm here to free the slaves. From outside the pit? That's new. I heard there might be someone from far away showing up. Here's a little something that I've found. Make good use of it. He gives us a few stim packs, but we lose karma. We can continue. I'm here to find a cure for the mutations. Oh. Oh? A cure? That is very interesting. I'll be sure to note that. Medea is helping Werner. I guess that shouldn't surprise anyone. The bosses all thought they were up to something. Here's a couple of things for your trouble. They should help keep you alive out here. Werner is trying to free the slaves. That figures. 
Must be why the bosses hate him so much. Here are a couple things. Thanks for your help. If we don't pass the speech check, we can ask him the other options. We can say, I need a weapon. Where can I find Marco? You're looking for Marco, hmm? What's he up to? He's over in the old control room, near the gate to Uptown. I'll... I'll let him know you're coming. If we choose this option later in the game, we find Marco dead. After all, Brand is a mole and we just told him that slaves can get weapons from Marco. Or, if this guy makes us suspicious, we can say, What's with all the questions? Oh, no reason. Just asking. I haven't seen you before, that's all. Never mind, then. Why should I tell you anything? Hey now, why so angry? I'm just asking some questions. No reason to jump down my throat. Never mind, then. If we choose either of those two options, he refuses to talk with us anymore. Choosing to give him all of the information we know has no impact on the game. We just lose karma. There are no end-of-story ramifications. Behind him, we find a terminal labeled Ammo Press Terminal. We find two options, but we're locked out. Only authorized users can access these. However, this is exciting. Does this mean that we can press our own ammunition? And it may help explain exactly what they're using all of this metal for. As we leave Marco, we overhear a conversation between two slaves. Hey! Are you crazy? If they see us talking, fuck them. Those assholes will be a bad memory once we pull this off, assuming you're in. Okay, I'll do it. But I'm not killing anybody. You understand me? Enough blood's been spilled in this place already. You're making the right decision here, man. Okay, just stay ready. I'm not sure exactly when. Today, tomorrow, next week, I don't know. But soon. Hmm... Sounds like the slaves are planning some sort of insurrection. Turning right and going around the big hole, we see a raider named Bone leaning against a wall smoking a cigarette. Don't you have work to do, Scab? Is the little Scab looking to get hurt? And the little Scab better get out of my face! Ha! Are you nuts? Get the fuck back to work before I pull your arms off! Ha! Charming. Continuing along, we find even more slaves working, shoveling slag into a furnace. We pass a couple more furnaces which are not in use, until we find a slave lying on the ground writhing in pain. Oh, oh, it hurts. What the? Oh, oh, please. You there, what are you Someone doing? help me. Get back to work! Nap time's over! Get up! Get up, goddammit! Fine, have your little break! But if you're not tossing coal when I get back, you're dead! Help me! It hurts! It hurts! If we try to talk with the slave after the raider walks away, we have the option to help this guy in one of two ways. With the proper application of medicine, this man's injuries could be lessened enough that he could be put back to work, but not completely cured. The only way to end his suffering is to end his life. If we choose to treat his injuries, he stands back up with a groan. Thanks for patching up that asshole. He's got at least another week before he drops dead from exhaustion. <laughs> he goes back to work, but he's not happy. Oh. If, on the other hand, we choose to end his suffering... Oh! Well, that's one less useless mouth to feed. The raiders don't even care. If we choose to do nothing and just let this guy sit here, when the raider comes back to check on him... I warned you! Oh. Oh. Well, that's one less useless mouth to feed. She puts him out of his misery anyway. In my game, I chose to treat his injuries and put him back to work. After all, I'm here to free the slaves, and I'm highly confident that I'll be successful. If he suffers for a few more days, it's a small price to pay for freedom for the rest of his life. Right next to this slave is a small platform, which we can access by climbing up a ladder on either side. This leads to some sort of control room where we find Marco. Werner isn't going to fail us. Hey, not so loud. The bosses can't see what I'm up to over here. Oh yeah? Why shouldn't I just tell them what you're up to? Why would you? They'll probably thank you for the information with a bullet to the head. They don't give a rat's ass about you. And what are you doing, Marco? Making weapons. 
Lots of them. There's something coming, and soon. So, I take the crap we find out in the yard, and some of the tools we use, and I make them into stuff we can fight the bosses with. Hey, I need a weapon. Can you help me out? Yeah. You're the one Medea told me about. Werner sent you, right? I can help you out. Take this. It's called an auto axe. Nice, huh? I make them out of the old car parts the breakers drag in from the city. Do what you can with it. Just be careful around the bosses. Make a wrong move, and you're done. He gives us an auto axe. The one he gives us has really low condition. It does 20 damage with a weight of 20. And it's a lot like a ripper, only a whole lot bigger. When we press the fire button, the saw blade activates and enemies get chewed to pieces. This will be a whole lot of fun to use against the trogs when we enter the steel yard. In this room, we find two terminals, each called a rotary press terminal. On both terminals, we have an option to choose emergency stop. But if we make that selection, nothing happens. We get a message saying, command ignored, override enabled. I'm thinking this may be part of some cut content because no choices we make in the game allow us to activate these terminals. Heading out of Marco's little room, we can finish exploring this wing of the mill. We find some stairs in the back, but these lead up to a big broken platform. The other connecting bit has been gated off by the raiders, so there's no way for us or the slaves to access the scaffolding that the raiders use. Hopping back down, we see a gate in the rear of the building being guarded by a raider named Hammer. No scabs need a gate. Back off. This must lead to Uptown, where the raiders live, which is why we don't have access to it. Now that we're done exploring the mill, we need to go to the steel yard to collect the 10 steel ingots for the raiders. This is all part of our cover, remember? Retracing our steps, we find an elevated pod to the west, and heading up, we meet Everett. So you're the lucky scab gathering ingots for me today, huh? Yep, that's me. Good to see a little enthusiasm for once. Well, follow me. Following Everett through the doors, he tells us more about the job. So, still your duty, huh? Who'd you piss off to get that death sentence? Actually, don't even tell me. It's not like you'll be alive for long anyways. He exits through a door to the steel yard. As we follow him, we see our first trog on the scaffolding above. See that fellow up there? You'll be seeing lots of those. And if you survive them, probably run into those crazies that live up on the blast furnace. Tell you what, why don't you do me a favor and get killed close to the door? That way, I don't have to walk so far to loot your corpse, eh? Here's the door. Get out there and grab some ingots. Don't come back without at least ten. Turn them into me and I'll see if I can slip a little something your way. With that, Everett leans against the door. Damn sla- I mean workers. And we open the door to the steel yard. The steel yard is impressive, being one of the largest places to explore in all of Fallout 3. And we have quite a job ahead of us. We only need to collect 10, but there are over 100 steel ingots in this steel yard. We will explore the whole thing in great detail in episode 3. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I'm dedicating all next week to the pit, so if you want to make sure that you don't miss an episode, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. I publish a new video six days a week. I take Sundays off, so I'm not going to have a video for you on Monday, but we'll pick up with episode three of the pit Tuesday morning. Until then, you folks have a great weekend, and I'll see you bright and early Tuesday morning with a brand new episode.